2022 was a very funny year. A lot of people took a lot of L's. Uh, finance community took a lot of hits because of course share prices just absolutely were decimated. And in this video, I'm gonna call out the biggest L's of 2022. What's up guys and don't forget to smash that like button it really helps the algorithm push this video out to more people now let's dive right into it. So guys when we start off with the biggest L's of 2022 you absolutely know exactly where we're going for the first L and that is the Bitcoin bulls so you can see that Bitcoin is down over 60% this year and I just called out Bitcoin there's a ton of other coins and you guys probably know this better than I do I'm sure all of these coins have gone pretty much to zero if not they're just not trading anymore and you know some of the things that I heard from the Bitcoin experts that I was speaking to when I put out my Bitcoin series was you know they were saying that Bitcoin is gonna replace fiat I never believed that argument it didn't make sense um, the one question I always asked them was, how are you going to value Bitcoin? Like, what is its value? What does it represent, etc.? They could never give me an answer to this. And then, of course, you know, you had the explosion of more coins, and I would just call them shit coins because that's really what they were. And effectively, what it was was a speculative mania. And, you know, will Bitcoin continue to surge in the future after taking this big L? Yeah, it probably will come back because there's no shortage of foolishness in the market. But as, you know, all the value investing community, at least they say, is that, you know, at least gold has some sort of finite value because there's a finite amount of it. These coins, they just keep making more and more of them. Now, I understand that like a coin like Bitcoin, there's a certain limited amount. But then what ends up happening in these speculative manias is that people just make their own coins, which is what we saw. And so all that ends up happening is people are not using these coins for their ultimate utility which was to create some sort of like decentralized internet currency they used it to be speculative and try and make money and so obviously they all lost now do i believe in the future prospects of a crypto based uh exchange or a crypto based currency I think as governments continue to devalue currency, there is a value to having something that's backed by something strong that exchanges on a decentralized platform. However, it's gonna have to be backed by something more than just promises. So it's gonna have to be backed by gold or something. I just don't see it being the way that it currently is, but we'll see how this plays out. But ultimately, I am not a buyer of Bitcoin. I've never been a buyer of Bitcoin. I'm probably the only YouTube channel in 2021 that actually tried to value bitcoin everyone else was telling you why you should be investing in it i was the only one saying what is it worth but as we move into 2023 you can absolutely bet that at least on this channel we're not bitcoin bag holders we're alibaba bag holders now moving along the next big l that was taken in 2022 of course was ftx and you know the one thing that i will point out here is that and I think this was Spencer Cornelia who said something like this on his channel when he tried to defend his uh, buddies who were pushing the FDX um, uh, deposits or they had some sort of like affiliate relationship with FTX to try to get their followers to invest in FTX. Uh, you know, he said that no one could predict a crypto exchange would go bankrupt. Now I put these in quotes, but those are probably not exactly his quotes. You know, he said something along the lines of this. And basically what he was saying is that, you know, even the institutional investors invested in FTX. So if they could get it wrong, then, you know, the, uh, YouTube community should not be at fault for getting it wrong. But he Here's the problem, you know, the crypto exchanges have gone bankrupt over and over throughout history or throughout, you know, the past few years at least. And, you know, I covered it on my channel when I originally made that video and I just did a quick uh, Google search just for this video and you can see pretty much every month over the last six months another crypto exchange went bankrupt so the fact that you're saying that crypto exchanges nobody could see them going bankrupt you're just not paying attention you just liked that sweet FTX cash you know one of the things that you gotta do if you're gonna do YouTube is ask yourself are you here for the viewers or are you here for yourself and it, you know if if you're not able to see something like this and you have a channel that specifically is made to call out uh, uh, like scams and stuff, then what are you actually doing? And, you know, I found this quote here 
on the internet. I thought it was very interesting, and, and I think it's right. The crypto industry has witnessed several black swan events since its inception, and while hacks and bear markets have been major causes, fraud and mismanagement have played an equal role. So the question I have for you is why would we shilling something in an area that has an equal role of fraud and mismanagement? It just doesn't make sense. Uh, and at the end of the day, it tells me that you were only there for the money. You did not care about the viewers. And so you took a big L and you know, your boy SPF also took a big L in 2022. And so you know, this leads me to my next L uh, in the finance community in 2022, which of course I'm calling the finance grifter. So you have real estate agents, gas station attendants, magicians, all pretending to be finance experts with zero formal training or professional experience pitching financial products. What could go wrong? And this is a video by CoffeeZilla and it's got 1.5 million views. And the reason why it's got 1.5 million views is because there's a lot of people that agree with him that you know you guys shouldn't have been pitching those products now you're probably going to get away scot-free and that's fine as far as i'm concerned because there's some level of ownership by the people who invest in these products these are all unregulated investments at the end of the day and so as an investor you have to be careful and do your due diligence as i always say on this channel as well but your credibility was seriously shot and so i don't know how you guys get your credibility back you guys are probably still going to get views your channels are going to be fine and there's no hate on my side i want you guys to you know make your youtube ad spend money but maybe when it comes to pretending like you're an expert in at least the crypto space maybe cool off that in 2023 now speaking about people who are pretending that they're experts in finance the one area that i found very interesting in 2021 and in 2022 were the number of people who thought that they were short seller busting experts and i you know i actually went publicly short on one of these types of opportunities and actually ended up making money and so what am i talking about well of course i'm talking about the amc fools and these people have been waiting for a short squeeze for two years now and you know what guys it's not coming and uh, you guys may have pumped the stock to 30 dollars per share and then 25 dollars per share in 2022 but ultimately you lost money and you know what i publicly made a video and this is not in my sort of like wheelhouse i don't really throw negativity but you know this was getting ridiculous and so i publicly made a video in uh 2021 i believe it was where i shorted amc at 30 dollars per share and you know i wanted everyone to see because i knew this was eventually going to blow up and why did i think that this was going to blow up because management put out a press release where they themselves said it was going to blow up AMC bulls downvoted the video to oblivion, but of course your share price went down to oblivion as well. And you're down 85% in the year. And so it goes to show that like you may not necessarily be the expert that you think you are when it comes to uh, breaking shorts or short squeezing people. And so as it relates to investing, the advice that I'd always give is just try not to lose money. Don't do any of this fancy stuff in hopes that you're going to get rich quick. However, I do have a bit of reprieve for the AMC fools. And that reprieve is that I think this is me just speculating, but I heard rumors somewhere. So this is not confirmed, guys. But I heard rumors that AMC is looking to sign 50 Cent as a celebrity sponsor because that's exactly where the share price is going in 2023. So what I got to say is that with the money that I made on the short of AMC, you can just find Find me in the club, bottle full of bub. Mama, I got what you need. Oh, I gotta stop right there. Don't ever do that again. But at the end of the day, what I'm trying to say is that foolishness doesn't work. The only thing we got to do, and I'm going to lead with a little bit of compassion here. The only thing that works is focusing on not making mistakes, focusing on true value investing principles. If you're going to speculate, you're eventually going to get burned. Even if you win on one opportunity, you're eventually going to get burned on another one because you're not following proper principles. But hopefully you learned your lesson. And in 2023, you make some reasonable investment decisions. Now the next L, this one pains me a little bit because I'm pretty sure Chamath is a Canadian. I know he 
went to Waterloo uh, University. And so this one pains me a little bit, but the guy who called himself the next Warren Buffett, the king of SPACs, well, it looks like nobody's comparing Tramath to Warren Buffett now. The SPACs have wiped out a considerable amount of their value and investors have pretty much lost appetite for any new SPAC deals. And you know, the one that I did call out in October of 2021, I actually, when I called this one out, I actually didn't even know that this was a Chamath deal, but I actually called this out in a video where I said that uh, although I liked Open Door's product, although I felt like Open Door had a value in society, I just did not believe that the whole industry was going to go into this programmatic home buying area. I thought just there's going to be a value to a certain amount of home sellers, but it's going to be a small amount of home sellers. And so I value the company when it was trading at around $30 per share. I said it was between anywhere between three and $6 per share. Check me in the comments for those of you who watched that video and remember exactly what price I gave it. But I think I priced it at around $6 per share. And I said, wouldn't touch it for uh, anything more than $3 per share. And it was trading at 30 at the time. And now of course it's trading at $1 per share. And we have a situation now where will this company go into bankruptcy? Who knows? I'm not touching it. The next L, of course, is someone else that I really like. I really like Kathy Wood. I think she's a lot smarter than I am. But unfortunately, we just disagree with the price that we pay for securities. And so, you know, you can see ARK uh, was trading around $40 per share before the pandemic. And then, of course, it ran all the way up to $160. And now it's all the way back down. In fact, it's under that $40 per share. So we just went on a roller coaster ride. But if you held on from 2019 and you're there right now uh, you didn't really make any money and of course most people got into arc after this run here so you guys are down almost like 80 90 percent it looks like and you know i called out the roku valuation many times on the channel i really well i really wish i could spell the word really but i really do like kathy but i could just never get behind the price that she pays for securities and i think roku has a lot of staying power i in fact own a roku myself i just wouldn't buy the stock for the valuation that she was pitching it at i remember there was a time where it was over 300 dollars per share and you know early on in uh this channel's lifetime you know i did have early patreons on the channel that were very excited about Roku and unfortunately I had to break the news to them that I wouldn't even pay a tenth of what uh, they were willing to pay for it. and it's crazy that the share price came down as much as it did but of course we needed to snap back to reality and now here we are and so as we move into 2023 let's focus on valuation stories are good but stories are only good if we also focus on the valuation and that's sort of something that I'm trying to explain to the Tesla crowd now the Tesla crowd might actually be right at the end of the day but I'm not willing to pay sky high value by pricing in sky high levels of growth for the company and so you guys are probably are willing to pay those astronomical amounts for tesla i'm not and of course the ultimate winners uh this year in 2022 were i think the viewers of this channel i'm biased of course but i just want to wish you guys a happy new year and i found this really funny photo on the internet of a cat with canadian dollars on it so uh drop a meow in that chat for all you crazy investors out there now i'm going to have a lot of fun today i'm going to club living room and i have a distinguished guest this year i have my little baby guy who's 15 16 days old so i got this little tuxedo suit for him we'll have some appetizers M mommy and i will have some nice steak surf and turf and we'll enjoy ringing in the new year and i really hope to see you guys next year i really appreciate all of you guys we hit a million views this year which is absolutely incredible for a guy that just rants about sarbanes oxley on a youtube channel and so i think it's great i'm very humbled with all the support that i've gotten from you guys and i really hope to do really good work in 2023 so i'll leave it there happy new year's guys